Hey guys, Dr. Sean here. I got asked this morning about, Doc, what do you think about gluten? And is there really a problem with this? Is it legit? Is it, you know, you see it all over the place, gluten-free this, gluten-free that, and everyone all of a sudden has a gluten sensitivity. It's, it's an interesting thing. First, you have to understand what gluten is, okay? It's a byproduct. It's a protein that's found in different grains. Now, wheat tends to have the most of it. But you'll see it in rye, you'll see it in barley, sometimes you'll see it in oats, as long as it's not a gluten-free type oat. Uh, you see it in other grains. Now what's interesting about gluten, there's a condition called celiac disease. Now celiac is a serious health condition. That's one where the body has almost built up an intolerance to this. And we know for some reason or another that the lining of the intestinal tract has become challenged. Now they'll label these things as autoimmune disorders and things of that nature. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like the term autoimmune. I don't really truly believe in it. I think that it's hard to imagine that the body's gonna turn on itself and then stop itself from turning on itself. It doesn't make any sense to me. One of the things I do believe in though is something called auto intoxication, where we poison ourselves from our GI tract back in. So that uh, proverbial leaky gut is kind of the term you hear now for it. 150 years ago, you'd hear the term endocanuria. That's what they used to call it, but they couldn't fix it. So if you can't fix it, name it and call it something else. So we, we, we look at this and we think, okay, what about gluten? Then? What, what really are we looking at here? We're looking at a protein and there's different variations of it. There's a gliadin portion to it as well, which is another type of protein. So you got these proteins, just to, to make it real simple, and they come in the body and for some reason the body can't deal with them. It sees them as foreign or an irritant to the body. So right away, right, we specialize in digestion. So immediately I think, okay, the body can't deal with it. That means we lack the enzyme. Right away, because that's what enzymes do, guys. Enzymes digest food. That's what actually breaks your diet down for you. So when you start looking, you think, oh, I'm gluten sensitive and this and that. We think, well, wait a minute. Are you really sensitive to that protein or do you just lack the enzyme to break it down. Now we come to another point. Let's take wheat, for example. Today, wheat has 28 proteins that did not exist in it 100 years ago. So now we're getting into this idea of, okay, if we're tinkering with our food chain, if we're messing with our food chain, there's a potential that we could be causing imbalances in how the body deals with it. Now, in fairness to gluten, there's throughout history, there's been gluten intolerances. People have had trouble with it. People have had trouble breaking those proteins down. So they're difficult to break down to begin with. But when you get in there and you start playing mad scientist and you start genetically tinkering to make your wheat grow better or last longer or be bug resistant or weather resistant, when we do these things to it, now we tinker even more. And I truly believe that's why we're seeing this massive increase really in the last 30 years of gluten intolerances and gluten sensitivities. Now, push comes to shove. You gotta be careful with this, right? You run into the, the, the grocery store and you see this wall of food. And on the wall, what do you notice? That, oh, there's an organic section we can go to now. And there's gluten-free cookies and gluten-free bread and gluten-free waffles and cereals. And Guys, that's no better than going and buying the other stuff on the shelves, right? It may be gluten-free, they removed it somehow, but it's still a processed food. And processed foods cause way more harm to us than gluten ever will. So if you are someone that has a gluten sensitivity or you question it, how would you know? Bloating, gas, distension, you can have a loose stool, but you see that same thing with lactose intolerance, milk sugars. You see that same thing when you have problems digesting raw vegetables, broccoli, lettuce, you see the same symptoms. You'll see that same symptom if a gallbladder starts to get a little funny or wonky. So you look at that and think, well, wait a minute. My symptoms for all these conditions are very, very similar. What's the common theme? Digestion. If I can digest the plant, if I can digest the product, the protein, the fat, the carb, I don't get all those symptoms. The body can handle it. So it's not a nail in the coffin death sentence for you. If you happen to be sensitive to gluten, gliadin, if you have celiacs, Crohn's, colitis, irritable bowel, guys, all of these things 
can be helped. You just have to support normal body function. How do we do it? We examine, examine, examine. I run a 24-hour UA in my practice. Find out what the body's holding on to and what it's throwing away. Once you know this, you can tailor a program to help restore normal body function. And gluten sensitivities, colitis, celiacs, Crohn's, all these things can be managed and helped. It's that simple. I'm Dr. Schultz.